ICCO welcomes you back to a new series of four Tutti a Tavola cooking classes sponsored by The Loft at Longo's. We're thrilled of the enthusiasm that you showed us and even more of the good feedback you sent with regards to the past classes we presented. And we're extremely grateful to Longo's for partnering with us and making this new session of Tutti a Tavola possible. The opening video you just watched was a summary of the classes we held in the month of June. If you missed them, you can check the ICCO YouTube channel where the Tutti a Tavola classes are posted. Chef Roberto Fracchioni is back in his kitchen. He will be preparing for us four delicious recipes for the series. A seafood pasta dish for tonight and two tasty panini for next week which will make our August picnics and meals al fresco very exciting. After that, we will resume our classes on September 1st and September 15th with two recipes that will introduce us to the fall season. Braised chicken with artichokes and olives and hazelnut brown butter cake with pears and apples. Remember, if you're looking for more recipes ideas, you can pick up a copy of Longo's magazine at any store location. You can also check the Longo's website for any updates on the in-person classes at the loft that will resume in the fall. And finally, don't forget to pair Chef Roberto's recipes with a selection of wines available at the Longo stores where staff will be ready to help select. Let's get started with this evening class. I see Roberto ready to go. He has a passion for cooking and for enhancing the qualities and the properties of the ingredients he uses. It transpires in every recipe he presents. As a result of his 20 year long experience as an executive chef. Roberto is also a professor and a food consultant. But before we start, I would like to ask a couple of quick questions to Roberto. So chef, why did you choose the seafood pasta for you? For me, I can't go too long without eating, <laughs> without eating pasta. And uh, in the summertime, it's just a lot, it's a lot lighter than some of the heavier meat sauces. And yeah, so the seafood pasta always goes well in the summer. Yeah, that's, and, 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 you know, the next thing I wanted to ask you before you start with your recipe is, is, is this, other than the use of re, re seasonal ingredients, what should we keep into consideration when cooking during summertime? Do you, do you have any tips for us to in mind when preparing our meals 
that help well, us stay I mean, fresh and healthy? I, for me, it's it's always the same for me, and my advice is the same. It's it's what I do, and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, is I usually don't go into the grocery store with a complete recipe ready in my brain. I have an idea of what I want to cook, and then I just walk up and down the aisles, and I see what looks good. Um, when asparagus is ready, you grab asparagus. Asparagus season is kind of over now. Uh, so you start moving into summer squash. You start moving into beautiful fennel. And I just let the ingredients sort of dictate where, where, my, uh, where my meals go. Perfect. That's a great tip, actually. I should keep them in mind that next time. I <laughs> <my groceries. laughs> we'll go Anyways, shopping well, together. Yeah. So thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we're just curious to, to start and see how you will prepare the seafood pasta tonight. So please go ahead. Let's start. And thank you all for, uh, for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, Tiziana. Okay. Well, today's class, um, a lot of today's class is going to be on the stove. This is a very uh, pan heavy, like a little, a big stove heavy kind of dish. Prep wise, there's really not a ton to do. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to prep all my seafood right away uh, so that it's all ready to go and then we're going to sear all of our seafood um, and then over, head over to the stove and cook it all off. The actual execution, the cooking time of this dish is really, really pretty quick. It's about 15 minutes. You just need to do a little bit of prep ahead of time in getting your fish ready. So I have a beautiful selection of fish here. So what I did here is, again, like I said, what I did with my vegetables, I just went over to the seafood counter uh, at the Longos, and I just saw what they had. So on the recipe, um, I called for shrimp and I called for mussels. Uh, then when I got to the seafood counter, I saw some beautiful halibut, so I grabbed some halibut. Uh, I saw some beautiful lobster tails, so I got some lobster tails. Um, Prep wise, it's all, like I said, all quite simple. First thing we want to do is clean our shrimp. So our shrimp, these are called zipper backs. So that means that the backs have already been cut open. The shell has been cut along the back. So all you have to do is peel that and remove the outside shell. Now, this is where you have to make a decision whether you want to serve the seafood, whether you, want, sorry, whether you want to serve the shrimp with the tail on it. A lot of people leave the tail on because it looks kind of cool. Um, with pastas, I generally take it off just because if not, you know, you end up with this little, you know, crispy little bit of shell in your mouth and it's not very cool. So if you want to take it off, you just want to pinch it right where the tail meets the meat, you just sort of pinch it with your thumb to make sure that you get all of the meat that's deep down inside the shell. If you do want to serve it with the shell on, with the little tail shell on, I just want to show you one little thing that you should do. And that is, if you spread the tail open like this, you'll see there's this little centerpiece here. So this little centerpiece is really kind of sharp and pointy. So what I always do, uh, is if I'm going to serve it with the tail on, I just take this little piece of shell off. You just take the shell off so that it's not as, uh, not as stabby in somebody's mouth. So, but like I said, for today, we're just going to take the whole, the whole shell off, tail and all. Now, the other thing that I picked up today um, was a little bit of calamari. Now, calamari or squid uh, is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ingredient, uh, but Often people associate it with a very, you know, chewy kind of elastic band kind of uh, fish. And that is just a mistake of overcooking. A few of the things that we're cooking here today are very, very susceptible. Seafood as a whole is a lot harder to cook um, because the, the window of doneness is very different. And what I mean by it's very small. What I mean by that is if you're grilling a piece of steak on the barbecue, um, medium rare, if you want to cook it to medium rare, you have about, I don't know, I'd say about 10 minutes, I don't know, maybe seven minutes where it passes through the doneness of medium rare. Uh, with calamari, you have about 20 seconds. Uh, same with the scallops, you have about 30, 40 seconds. So your window of cooking it perfectly is much, much, much smaller. But I'm going to walk you through it, don't worry. 
The other thing we have to prep are our little lobster tails. So I just got the lobster tails today as opposed to the whole lobster, uh, just for the, you know, the ease of the class. Uh, I would love to show you all how to cook a lobster. It's very, very easy how to clean a lobster. But today we're just going to talk and clean and eat the tail. So to get the meat out of these tails, all we do is we take the very end of it, the fin of it, hold it with the palm of your hand and push it backwards. And the tail cracks and comes right off. This one's being a little finicky. Now all we do, we flip it upside down and with a pair of scissors, just go in and separate and cut the connective tissue that's on the bottom of the, of the tail. Now you can go through the shells if you want. I prefer to do this side because it's a little easier to cut. Then we just grab it like this and push it with our palms. The shell cracks and the lobster meat falls right out. Well, you got to pull it out a little bit, but it's quite easy to get out, just like that. So I'm going to do both of these, same thing, grab the tail, push it, and then a little snip on the backside. Try not to cut the meat too much. I really, you don't want to cut the meat because it'll dry it out when it's cooking. So just, just want to cut the very, the very outside skin of the bottom of the lobster. Okay. Now the meat is fairly delicate. So you want to be delicate. Sometimes it sticks a bit like this. So you just want to be very gentle and pull it out and keep it nice and whole. Now, when it comes out out of the shell and it's raw, it, uh, it really doesn't look that appealing. Um, don't worry, once it cooks, it'll be, it'll be wonderful. It's just right now, it just looks a little, not where you're used to with lobster. So what we do now is we're just gonna cut these into small little medallions little fork sized pieces basically you want this to be able to fit onto a fork and we have our lobster done now the other fish that we have is a little bit of halibut that's already cut up into dices dice dices dice i don't know what the proper english is uh and a few clams now i left this guy here for a reason so you can see how this clam is open if it's open don't cook it, okay? Uh, if the clam is open, that means he's, uh, he's already dead. You don't want to eat a dead clam. So that guy gets thrown out. What you want to do is you want to look for clams that are nice and tightly closed. If they're open, like this guy, what you can do is just give him a little tap. Um, and if it closes, then it means it's uh, alive. If you tap it and he stays open, yeah, gonzo. Uh, same with mussels, the exact same process for mussels. You just give him a little tap and make sure that they are tightly closed before we start cooking them. Give them a scrub under uh, cold running water and you're ready to cook them. So we are going to take all of our seafood over to the stove now and we're gonna start cooking. So when it comes to cooking the seafood pasta, um, it's, it's a bit of a challenge because to get the timing right for the seafood and the pasta and the sauce to have it all come together you have to be really 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 good in order to do it in one pan so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys how to do it sort of the easy way the foolproof way where you're cooking everything separately so what we're going to do in a separate frying pan is we're going to cook all of our seafood but we're going to undercook it all um, what we want to do here is just make sure that when we cook our fish that we take it out a little bit underdone uh, the reason is if we don't then if we cook it all the way by the time you finish everything else you finish your sauce your pasta water your pasta comes to a boil and you plate it and you assemble it then all your fish is overcooked and then you get that elastic band kind of action with your calamari so what we're going to do cook it about halfway now some of these are very easy to cook the shrimp for example are very easy but some of the other fish i'm going to tell you how to tell the difference 
So before we start cooking, are there any questions yet? A lobster does not have the pointy tail like the shrimp. It's the shrimp, shrimp that has, that has that little pointy, pointy bit. Um, the lobsters don't have it. They're all just the, the five round little edges. Um, okay, thank you. We have another question. How much fish would you recommend per person compared to the amount of pasta per person? Oh, you mean the ratio? Uh, ratio. The ratio is, uh, I'd say, for 500 grams of pasta, of dried pasta, which will feed six people as a, you know, as a first course, uh, you need about four ounces per person of fish. So that's four, eight, 16, yeah, 24 ounces of fish in total for 500 grams of uh, pasta dough. Um, can you also use de-shelled clams? Can I also use the shells? Yes, you can absolutely use the, the de-shelled uh, shrimp. Um, it's just a matter of preference. If you want to, you know, take the extra second of, of peeling off the shells, you can, it's no big deal. I like to do it, I don't know, I'm just used to it as a, you know, being a chef for so long, we usually get them in with the shells on. So we always keep the shells. And then you use that to make a lobster bisque or a shrimp bisque, or you use it for, you know, uh, a fish stock of some kind. Okay, so we're gonna start cooking now. So our pan is fairly hot. It's getting there. So I'm on fairly high. Uh, I'm, almost, I'm almost on max. Now, when you're cooking fish, you wanna cook it very quickly. So what we do, make your pan hot, okay? Little drizzle of oil, not too much, uh, just a little bit of olive oil, just to coat the bottom of the pan. You can see that it's not, you know, we're not deep frying it, we're just coating the bottom of the pan. And then we're gonna start off, I'm gonna cook first um, my scallops. So the scallops that we, that we have here are already cleaned and ready to go. So all we have to do is drop them into the pan and very delicately drop them into the pan. You see, I'm not, you know, slapping them in there. I'm not being aggressive with it. Be very, very delicate. Scallops are another fish that a lot of people overcook. And people have had scallops uh, for years and years and say, oh, I don't like them. They're always so tough and rubbery. If they're tough and rubbery, they're not being cooked properly. Scallops are very delicate, very little connective tissue. So when you cook them, you have to, you have to really, really be quick about it, really make sure they're not overcooked. So the rule of thumb with a scallop is that if you think it's done, it's overdone. So you cook them, you have to take them off before you actually think that they're cooked. So we're just gonna give that a few minutes. In the meantime, because the, the lobsters are very similar in the way in which they cook, I'm going to add the lobster. Now, generally, like I said, I would do these all at separate times, um, but we only have an hour to get through here and I have a lot of fish to cook, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on moving to get through all of the different fish that we have. So, you don't see this off camera, but I'm washing my hands after every time I, uh, every time I touch the shrimp you can try and sorry touch the seafood you can use tongs you can use tweezers if you want uh but for the first time i usually just use my fingers to get the fish into the into the pan so again because we are half cooking our fish i'm going to give these scallops a turn right now and you can see they're not sticking to the pan okay if i were searing these and serving them as an entree I would cook them a little bit longer just to get a little more color on them. But because this is going into a pasta, and again, we have to only half cook them, I'm going to give them a quick turn now. So our lobster, same thing. Just give it a quick little turn. And again, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to worry about it being fully cooked because 
in the end, it's going to get cooked off in our sauce again anyway. So our lobster is cooked. Oops, it's flipped. Our scallops are there, okay? Now, this is how we tell done this. In, in restaurants, as, as you know, chefs, as cooks, we don't take a meat probe, a temperature probe, and stick it into each piece of meat or each piece of fish. We just poke it with our fingers. And we can tell if it's done just by the, the resistance of the meat. So I can tell these scallops are almost done. They're about halfway, so now I'm going to take them off. And what I'm going to do with all the fish is I'm just going to put it off to the side. And it's going to cool down a little bit, finish cooking. And we're just going to keep it warm while we do everything else. So this guy's sticking. So that comes off. All of our lobster is good. Yeah, so now as we're cooking the fish, your pan will dry up because the oil is being used up. So we just keep on adding oil to the pan. But we don't want to do it right from the beginning because then it'll just deep fry everything. So our shrimp are going to be next. And our shrimp go in. And you can use, you know, whatever fish you want. The order um, on the recipe, I listed an order based on the, the fish that I had specified. Uh, I usually do it, I usually start with the, the fish that cook the quickest uh, and end with the fish that take the longest. So the clams and mussels always take the longest. Any shellfish always takes the longest to cook and you'll see uh, shortly. So I always do those last. I don't know why. Um, it's just, I, I imagine I was taught that a thousand years ago by someone else. Um, so that's what I always do. So here are the shrimp. You can see that the tails, oops, are just starting to turn pink. Once the tails just start to turn pink, that's when we flip it over. From the time we flip it over, we just count to 10. 10 seconds is all we really need to get the heat to get through the center and make sure that your fish is cooked. So as we're cooking all of these, you see in the bottom of the pan, we're getting all this nice little bits of, of fish stuck to the bottom of the pan. That's going to be the basis for our sauce a little bit later. So don't change your pan. Don't take your fish out, grab another pan and say, oh no, this pan is burnt. That's beautiful. That is called fond and that's, that's flavor country. So now I'm going to do my halibut. And the halibut, again, there was enough oil in the pan, so I didn't need to add any more. And I'm just going to keep it moving as I start cooking it. And the reason is, if I leave it, it has a much higher chance of sticking to the pan. So if I move it around as it cooks, it will sort of start to cook on the outside of the fish. And it is much, much, much less likely to, uh, to stick. The one challenge, or I shouldn't say challenge, the one drag about doing it this way is all the grease splatter you get on your stove. You're going to have to scrub your stove very, very well when you're done. So one thing that I wanted to mention, um, actually, are there any questions before I move on? Uh, thank you, Chef. Um, yes, um, as far as the fish goes, could you use salmon or trout instead? You absolutely could use salmon and trout um, and like pink fish. The problem with that is that one, they tend to fall apart quite a bit during the cooking process and it kind of colors the sauce. So if you're using salmon or trout because they're pink, uh, your sauce ends up being a little bit pink. So you can see the halibut here. I've been fairly rough with it. I've been tossing it around in the pan and they're still, for the most part, completely intact. So that's why things like halibut and cod, uh, swordfish work incredibly well with this recipe. Uh, fish that are a little bit, uh, a little bit meatier work a lot better. And because they're white, they won't uh, discolor your sauce. So, so 
Um, thank you. We have a live question of somebody that is cooking alongside with you. Uh, the okay. scallops were fresh and they seem to be looking a bit frothy as I cook them. Is this okay? A little bit. What? Frothy. Um, yeah, a little bit of froth coming off. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's normal. Um, that's actually... Generally, I forgot to mention, you want to dry your scallops really, really well. Um, so if they go into the pan and they're a little bit wet, thank you for bringing that up, uh, then yeah, you'll get a little bit of that, that foaminess going on. Uh, but it's nothing to worry about. Uh, when you dry your scallops, they're a lot, uh, they brown a lot quicker. So yeah, that's what you want. And they're less likely to stick when they're nice and dry. So I'm cooking the calamari, and I want you to see how long I cook it for. It's literally 15, 20 seconds. Uh, the reason is, again, we're only half cooking it. And the other reason, we don't want to overcook it. So our fish is here. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that, for those of you who are paying attention, I haven't put any salt in here yet, which is kind of odd to be cooking all this fish and not having any salt in. The reason is when we go to make the actual pasta, when we go to make the sauce, we are going to be using um, the pasta water, a lot of the pasta water as sort of the base of the sauce. So the pasta water is going to be very salty. So we don't want to add any salt during the cooking process. There goes our wine. So now for the clams, we put it in and we cover it. Okay, and we let it simmer. Like I said, this is this is the longest time. This is the longest cooking uh, fish that we have on the in the pasta today. So I'm doing it right at the end. Now it's very tempting when you're cooking clams and mussels to do this. Keep on lifting the lid and look at it. Lift the lid and look at it. Don't do that. Leave the heat in there. You want it to stay in there. It's good. They're going to take at least at least six, seven minutes to cook. So for the first six or seven minutes, just leave it alone. Now, the pan is a little bit dry and it needs some moisture to sort of do the steaming. So that's why I added a little bit of wine. If you're not using wine, you can also use a little bit of uh, water. It doesn't really matter. But as long as there's some liquid in there to create some steam. So you can see how foamy they are. That's beautiful. So as the clams cook, they will open up. And when they open up, you know they're cooked. Very, very simple. Clams, mussels, mollusks, all mollusks, when you're cooking them, they tell you when they're done. So you don't have to worry about it being underdone. You don't have to worry about it. Basically, the same rule applies as the raw clams. If the clams are open, when you start to cook, don't cook with it. If they're because it's dead. If they're closed after you're done cooking them, don't eat it because they're dead. So while that's going on, we're going to start our pasta. We're that close. Actually, no, we're not. I'm going to wait a few minutes. I'm going to salt my water. And our water for this recipe, I'm using a little less than I normally use. Now, the reason is simple. Because, like I said before, we're using the, the starch, sorry, the water from the pasta as the sauce for the actual pasta. So, if we put too much water in, we don't get a lot of, of starch from the pasta in the water. And we want the water to be nice and starchy because that'll make a nice, rich, beautiful sauce. So we're going to use a little less water um, before, for our actual pasta. Are there some questions, I take it? Uh, yes, I think some, one of our viewers is using mussels. Um, should she add the mussels in now with the clams? Uh, the mussels, you, you can cook them, I would cook them separately of the clams uh, because the mussels will cook a lot quicker than the clams. Uh, the clams will definitely, definitely take the longest amount of time. Um, so if your clams are already in your pan, wait till your clams are done and then add your mussels. 
Okay. okay. So everything is cooking. This is when the clam is done. When it opens up, it's ready. So we just remove it, set it off to the side. Now, all the other fish were kind of half cooking. Um, the clams, you can't half cook. Uh, with a mollusk, either it's cooked or it's not cooked. There's no in between. So you can see he opens up. Sometimes they do need a little, uh, you know, a little push to open. So after a few minutes, I'll just come in and I'll start pushing them around to get them to open. Now, I can guarantee you when you cook clams, there's always going to be one. There's always one, one guy that's left in the pan. And you have to decide how much time you want to commit to getting this guy to open. I usually give the last clam an extra 30, 40 seconds. And if it doesn't open, I, I get rid of it. If not, you're going to sit here for five minutes, letting him cook, pushing him around, seeing if he's going to open up. And in the end, he'll be, uh, it won't open. It'll be a waste of your time. So we'll get rid of him. Now we have all of our, all of our uh, fish bits in here. You can see all the little bits of fish that are floating around in the bottom. Uh, we have a little bit of wine in there, and we have the, the juice that was inside of the clams. So this is another reason why I do the clams and the mollusks at the end, is that when they, when they cook and they open up, they're usually full of, of water. And if you let that water, as soon as you get that water into the pan, you can't sear anymore. Like you can't sear the fish, you won't get a nice brown color. So yeah, we just take it out, Oops, take out our clams. That's our little bit of shallot. This is a little bit of diced fennel. And again, I, I took the, the liberty of dicing everything already. This is a little bit of diced celery. And we just add that. And celery is, it's an important part of this dish. It's, uh, it seems kind of odd because it's one of the very few vegetables that go into this dish. This is a little bit of diced zucchini. But the celery really makes a big difference in this dish. The addition of just a little bit of celery, that, that bright kind of flavor, really changes the dish. I've done it without celery before, and it's okay. Uh, but with the celery, it's phenomenal. Any questions? Uh, yes, Chef. We have a few. Um, first of all, when you cook the clams, you used, or the seafood, you used white wine. Can you also use red wine instead? Uh, you absolutely can use red wine. Um, if you use red wine, uh, it'll just change the color of your sauce at the end. Uh, the flavor, I, I mean, yeah, you could. Uh, I just don't know how the flavor profile of the red wine and the fish would, would work out. So it's an interesting idea. Give it a try. Let me know how it works. I'd be, I'm curious to know. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, we also have a couple of questions for the salt. Uh, which kind of salt is best to use to cook pasta and how much did you put in your water? Okay, so with pasta, generally you want 10 grams of salt per liter of water, which is kind of hard because you're not going to like measure your water and weigh out your, your salt. Basically, you just want it to taste like the ocean. So what I always do, what I always tell my cooks, is taste your water. Take a spoonful of it and dip it. And if it tastes like the ocean, then you're ready to cook your pasta. I always use kosher salt. Uh, I don't use iodized salt, like, ever. Uh, I just like iodized salt, or sorry, kosher salt, because it's a much cleaner kind of flavor. So now our vegetables are getting kind of soft. So I'm gonna add my herbs. Our uh, herbs are in, our tomatoes are in, and we just wanna cook the tomatoes until they get a little bit soft. Now I'm gonna add another splash of wine, and our sauce is getting very close to being done. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna add our pasta 
to the water. So our water is boiling, our pasta goes in, and we let it cook. So the pasta I'm using today um, is the signature series um, uh, Papardelle. So there's a bunch of different cuts that you can use, uh, but I like having a nice big fat noodle with this. You have big pieces of fish, so if you use little delicate pieces of pasta, it's just, it doesn't work out as well. So, here we go. Our pasta goes in, it only takes a few seconds before all the pasta is under the water. There we are. Now, now we have all of our pasta, our sauce is being cooked off, our tomatoes are getting nice and soft. And you can see there's a bit of liquid in the bottom, okay? There's not a ton of liquid. Um, that's going to grow as it cooks because the water will come out of the tomatoes. Now, I like using a nice mix of red and yellow tomatoes in here because I don't want it to look like a tomato sauce. I don't want it to be all, I don't know, like I said, looking like a tomato sauce. Uh, so even though you get the yellow tomatoes cooked down, they'll give it the flavor of the tomatoes without staining it red. So now this is all cooked. We have everything coming together. I'm just going to taste, start tasting all my individual little pieces of vegetables. So a little piece of zucchini. That's cooked. My tomatoes are cooked. I'm going to find a little piece of fennel in here. Which I have. And where did it go? Piece of celery. There's a good piece of celery. All of it is nice and soft. All of it is ready to go. So now we slowly start adding our fish back into the pan. So we take, oh, that's warm. So you can see I just left the, I just left the uh, pan with all of our fish on it on top of the stove where it's nice and warm. So now we just slowly start adding our fish back into the pan. Now, once the fish goes back in, we have to really be delicate. We have to be careful. We don't want to, you know, saute it too much or else it's all going to start falling apart. So slowly start. I think I might need a bigger pan. The only thing I'm going to keep separate are the clams. Now, the clams, during the cooking process, we know they're already cooked because they opened up and we know that they're 100% they're cooked. So if I put them back in, there's a chance that they are going to overcook. So I'm just gonna leave them separate and we're just gonna use them kind of as garnish, kind of as um, food. And it's pretty hot in here. So even though they're hanging off to the side, they're getting a little bit cool, but they're not getting cold. Okay, so our fish goes back in, and I'm leaving the scallops and the clams out because that's going to go in right at the end. Now, this is where we add our, our actual pasta water to make the sauce. So, uh, a little bit of the pasta water goes in. So, that's about eight ounces, and we're going to let that simmer. This is going to warm up all of the fish and it's going to create the sauce that we need for to actually make a pasta, to actually coat all of the all of the pasta noodles once they come out of the water. So you see I'm not moving it around now. I'm not I'm not gonna grab it, I'm not gonna saute it because I'll just break all the fish apart. So we just put everything on. I'm just gonna cover it with a quick lid so that It'll just keep all the heat in and rewarm all of the fish. Now, when it comes to straining your pasta, it's very, you know, we're all used to taking our pasta, taking a colander and just dumping it into a colander. But what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we reserve some of the liquid. So I'm just going to strain the pasta into a regular pot. That way, if I do need some more of the, of the pasta water for the sauce, I can just pull it out and we'll be okay. So if you do this, don't strain right into your sink. 
If you straight into your sink, your pasta water is gone forever. Are there any questions out there while we're waiting for our pasta to cook? Uh, yes, Chef. This is Tiziana. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that we received. Sure. Can you hear me well? I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So the first question is, can we use Himalayan sea salt for this recipe? You absolutely could use Himalayan sea salt, um, but it's a very expensive salt to be using in your pasta water. Uh, those are usually considered like finishing salts. So they usually go on after your cooking is done. So it would be just for the final seasoning, but it would not usually be used in the pasta water because it's, yeah, it's a very, that makes like triples the price of your pasta. Okay. Um, and then another question as far as uh, uh, seasoning and spices. Can we, uh, can other uh, spices other than tarragon uh, be used? And how about garlic? You didn't put any garlic in your, in your um, uh, recipe, is that correct? No. So yes, as far as spices go, you can use, well, anything you want. I'm not a massive fan of tarragon. I don't, it's not one of my favorite herbs. Uh, but with uh, with this dish, the, the flavor of the tarragon works really, really well. So I'm using tarragon. If I was making this for myself, I would put a little bit of chili flakes in there too, um, just to give it a little bit of spice. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of keeping it simple with this uh, with this recipe today. Uh, but yeah, you could use rosemary if you like, really like rosemary. You can use anything you want, just nothing too, too strong or too much of it. Uh, fish is very delicate, so if you use too much herbs and too many of them, then you'll you won't taste the fish anymore, and all you'll taste is is the herbs. So okay, now thanks. you can see. Oh, sorry. Is there another question, Tita? No, no, that's okay. I just I think there's one about the celery. You put celery in it. Celery, yes. Okay. Yeah, I did put a little bit of celery and. It's just, I don't know, I really like the flavor of the celery in this with, with seafood. I always make sure that I have a celery component in it. Um, but again, like I've always said in all my classes, if you don't love celery, you know, don't put it in. If you don't like zucchini, don't put it in. You could put peppers into here if you wanted to. Um, but I did, as I said earlier, I just walked around the grocery store. And, you know, it's been a long, a long winter and spring of eating peppers. So I'm kind of looking for some new veg. So beans are happening now. Zucchini, the summer squash right now are, are amazing. Uh, so that's why I went with zucchini and this. Okay, great. Do we have time for another okay. question or you would you like to go ahead? You have about two and a half minutes before the pasta is done. Okay, so can the fish be cooked earlier in the day to save time when preparing the dish for later? Yeah, you could, uh, but you have to really be careful because if you cook it too early, then what happens is even if you're only cooking it halfway, by the time you put it in your fridge and you cool it down and then you have to warm it back up again, there's like there's a lot of chance for funkiness to happen, a lot of bacterial growth. So it's not the safest way to do it. Um, so yeah, ideally you just want to do it kind of how we're doing it here. Uh, and then this is the point where you could pause. You could take your sauce to this level, to this consistency, and then just put a lid on it, keep it off to the side. You have, you know, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour before it goes completely overcooked. But doing it like in the morning, yeah, no, it's it's kind of risky. It's kind of risky. I wouldn't do it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This is all for No now. problem. Okay. So I'm using, like I said, the pappardelle. So these nice big long noodles, nice and thick, nice and heavy. Uh, don't rush your noodles. Um, I know a lot of people are like, okay, yeah, they're close enough. And they'll take it out and they'll be crispy. But your noodles have to be cooked very, very well. They need to be al dente. Um, so they need to have a little bit of a bite, uh, but not too much crunch because you already have, you know, your fish that is nice and soft and delicate. If you add pasta that is too crunchy, then it's just going to, it's going to take away from the overall uh, experience of the dish. 
if your pasta is overcooked and it's soft and mushy, well, then just don't make pasta, please. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's this thing that, as a chef, when I first started doing pastas on my menus, uh, I don't know how many times I had to go out to a table to explain to, to diners that uh, pasta needed to be cooked al dente. That it should have a little bit of a, a little bit of a chew, a little bit of a crunch, not crunch, but a little bit of bite in the middle of the pasta. And that was a long, long, long time ago. And to this day, uh, people have gotten a lot better, but I still go to restaurants and get overcooked pasta. It's, it's to the point where I rarely order pasta in a restaurant. Um, so if you're doing it at home, please just do it right. It's really easy. It's really easy to cook pasta properly. All you do is you take it out. And you take a bite of it, and then you see how crunchy it is. This is very close. You get the snack while you're cooking, and you get to see if there's enough salt in the water. You get to get hungry about the overall dish, um, and you get to cook the pasta properly. So you can't just look at it. You can't time it. Uh, you just have to taste it. It's really the only way to know if you're doing it properly. So. Now that we're, our, our pasta is almost ready, I'm going to do the last move in our sauce, which is just taking a little bit of fresh chopped parsley, and I'm going to throw it in. Now, we're doing this right at the end for a couple of reasons. It's because we want, like, a nice pop from the parsley. Parsley is a very underrated herb. Um, it kind of fell out of favor in the 80s and 90s because people were using it to, you know, sprinkle around the rims of their plates. And it kind of ruined it for parsley, uh, but it has a wonderful flavor. So I don't want to overcook it. I just want to put it in so that I still get a nice, beautiful parsley flavor. And the color is nice and green. If you put it in too early, the flavor just kind of, it gets a little too, too, too gummy, too stodgy. Uh, and the color goes like an olive green, a dark green, almost brown, which is not cool either. So we're going to put it in. Our pasta is ready, so I'm going to take it out. When you're dealing with nice, big, long pasta, you can also do this. Just take it out separately. This is one of the joys of using big noodles. And now we're going to go over, and we're going to plate it kind of separately. So we're going to plate it like a restaurant. A couple different ways you can do this. One, you can try and toss your noodles into your actual pasta it's difficult but it can be done what i propose you do um, because when you do that you're just going to break up all the fish and it's going to it's going to crumble it's all going to fall apart is take your pasta and just put it into a mixing bowl or i'm using you know i'm just using a big plate that i'm going to plate in and then what we're going to do is take a little bit of our sauce and just put it on top, more of the liquid than anything else, okay? So we just give this a little stir. The starch from the pasta will, will stick a little bit to the, uh, the sauce, sorry, will stick to the starch of the pasta. And now we're going to plate this into our actual serving bowl. So I'll show you, I'll do it this way so you can see. So what we want to do is take our ladle. So this is a ladle that we used for the pasta water earlier. So it's an eight ounce ladle. And we take a little pinch of our pasta and just like you eat it normally, roll it up into a nice tight little ball. Okay. Now what you can do is put it into the ladle as well so that you get an even tighter ball. So you do this. And then you can put it right into the center of the plate. Nice and tight and nice and tall, okay? That way it'll stay in the position in which you put it on the plate. Now, it's a little bit more work this way, it's definitely. Actually, I shouldn't say a little bit more work. It's a lot more work uh, plating this way, but it just, it will look so much cooler when you compose your pastas. So now that our pasta is here, we start taking our fish out. And we actually place our fish around the pasta. And yeah, I know, like, it is a little more work. It is a lot more work. But in the end, you make 
pictures that, or sorry, you make uh, pasta that your friends will want to take pictures of, which is what it's all about these days, isn't it? You need all those Instagram pictures. So a little bit of the fish goes around, just wherever, evenly around. You want to make sure that from every angle of the dish that you're looking at, you can see all the fish that's in there. So shrimp, we have lobster. I need a little piece of lobster in this back corner. And now we take our clams and our scallops. So our clams go down fairly predominantly all the way around like that. And we take our scallops. And these are giant scallops, so I think I'm only going to get away with getting one or two on the plate. A couple of giant scallops. And now we take the rest of our sauce. So for the sauce, we always want to make sure that we do this last uh, because it has all the colorful bits. You have all the zucchini, you have the parsley, you have all the liquid. So we just want to spoon up the vegetable element and just kind of drizzle it around. There's some small bits of fish in there. That's all right too. But primarily what we're doing is we're kind of digging in here for the vegetable, the celery, the zucchini, the fennel, and the shallots, and a little bit of the liquid, a little bit of the sauce. So this is not a very heavy cloying kind of sauce. And that's what I love about this dish for summer is that it's light. The sauce itself, there's a little bit of olive oil, uh, and then there's fish water and a little bit of pasta water. So there's really not, not a lot of fat to it, not a lot of like, yeah, heavy stodginess. So I'm gonna put one last piece there. And then because I've kind of covered up all the pasta, you can barely even see the pasta anymore. I'm gonna put one last piece of pasta on here, kind of visibly. And our pasta, shrimp, or sorry, seafood pasta is done. One last little piece here, just because I don't know why. So if you want, you can tart this up with some more garnish. I'm just going to kind of keep it nice and clean and simple like this. So you look at it and you see a ton of seafood. You don't see a ton of sauce. And if you look here, you can see the sauce is lightly red. And it's fairly light right now. Um, that's because it hasn't had a lot of time uh, touching the pasta. But as it sits and has a little more time on with the pasta, the pasta will absorb a little bit more. It will release some starches and it'll thicken up a little bit. So that's, that's my time. Oh my goodness, my time's all right. So that's our pasta dish. Are there any questions? I'm sure there are because I've been talking a lot. So please, fire, fire away. away. Uh, hi, Chef. Yes, only a couple of questions for you. Uh, could you use a different type of sauce for this pasta? Oh, yeah, you absolutely could. I mean, you could um, you could do a sauce that's definitely more olive oil heavy for the summertime. You could do, I hate saying this, but you could do a cream sauce. I'm not a big fan of cream sauces in general, and I really don't like it with fish but you absolutely could do a cream-based sauce with this. When you do that, it kind of takes on a whole, other, a whole other dimension. It becomes much richer, much more, much more winter folly kind of a dish. Uh, it's not as summery. Uh, but yeah, you absolutely could, could play around with a touch of cream. You can mount it with a bunch of butter if you want, uh, just to give it a little more richness. But for me, the beauty of this dish is its simplicity and how light it is. Uh, could you put uh, cheese on this pasta? I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. No, yes, you, uh, it's, it's a tough one. Um, Cheese is always, uh, cheese and fish is always a hard, uh, a, a very difficult discussion to have. It doesn't work as well as everyone wants it to. That's what it comes down to. You can do it. You could put some parmigiano on here for sure. But it just covers up the flavor of the fish. And we have such delicate, beautiful, sweet 
flavors of fish here that if we put parmigiano on top of it, yeah, you just lose all those, you lose all that fish flavor. Now, there are some classic recipes that are, you know, very traditional, very old, that are fish and cheese. Very, very few of them. This doesn't work. I mean, if I've, when I've done this at a restaurant before, if a customer asks for cheese, absolutely, I will give them cheese. I'll just die a little bit on the inside. So do it if you want. Do it if you want. Um, but try it without cheese first, and you'll see that it doesn't really need it. Um, and just to summarize, uh, how many people does your recipe um, feed, and what temperature did you cook the fish at today? Was it medium or medium high? So the, the recipe is for six, uh, and my stove goes like to five, and I had it set on four. Um, you want it definitely on the hotter side. Uh, if you do it in a cool pan, what happens is all the liquid will just come out of the fish and then it'll dry out, it'll be tough, um, and it'll just be chewy and not very appealing at all. So nice high temperature so that you sear all those pieces of fish. Just one last quick question for you, chef. Can you add garlic? Yeah, sorry, that's what we were talking about. Um, you could add garlic if you wanted to, but that, I use the shallots. So the shallots, because they're in the onion family, you still get a sort of an onion element, but shallots are a little bit softer and a little bit sweeter than garlic. If you use garlic, again, you have to be delicate. We're talking about super sweet scallops and shrimp and calamari, like these are all delicate flavors. So any really big flavors will overpower the fish very quickly. So yes, you can use garlic, but for this recipe, I would add absolutely, if I got rid of the shallots, I would add no more than two small cloves of garlic and that's it. That's it. You don't want it. It's not scampy. It's not shrimp scampy. Um, it's, it's a much softer, much more delicate dish than that. Cool. So that's it for questions. Awesome. Okay. So I know there was a lot of stove time today and not a lot of me cooking and cut or sorry, cutting time today, but that's what we have to do next week. There's a lot more knife work. So I promise there'll be more. More stuff here, less stuff on the stove. Well, thank you so much, Chef. The pasta looked really delicious. Thank you all for thank joining you. us this evening. Thank you, Astrid and Isabella, for putting this together. From the ECO, the ICCO, see you next week with Tukia Travola. We're going to do two great panini recipes. Ciao a tutti and thank you so much.